guy behind the wheel of that Boulder Street Lightning? That's me, Bullet Bill Bowers. My folks and I just moved to this new city, and it sure seemed to me like we picked out a town full of sleepwalkers. That included the fellas and girls my own age, too. I never saw such a collection of sleepy Joes. And they drove like rich old ladies in old-time electric heaps. And it looked like I was going to have to educate the high school on the subject of hot rods. How to take a jalopy and really make it move. Why, in the burg I came from, I had the juiciest bug of any rotter in the goose greasers. That was our street racing club. And I had the biggest collection of traffic citations, too. All us greasers drove the cops crazy. And I could have started a private mental sanitarium for those I'd worked over. I hadn't met Walt Perry and his sister Janet yet. Walt was president of the Knights, the City Auto Sport Club. His sister was secretary. I guess my roadster impressed him. Yeah, I really had a job putting some life into this town. Why these jokers even walk slow? I went into my act at lunchtime, trying to bring the word to a bunch of prime squares. But believe me, that was the coldest audience anybody ever played to. I got nothing, just nothing. I didn't get it at all. Were these guys abnormal or something? Well, I joined up with a bunch of zombies. Yeah, it was gonna be tough, but I'd have to bear it. I was stuck with him. This city was a slow burn. It was kind of lonesome that first day and after school, but I knew a way to get him to notice me. It had always worked before where I came from. They knew I was around now, all right. You should have seen them scatter. I got a lot of attention. Some of it not quite what I had in mind. Officer Jim Daniels came to school to give his regular safety talk. He took off after me. he told me I was driving like a wild man. I took that as a compliment. And then he asked if I was a member of the Knights. So I said, no, I was a goose greaser and wanted to show him my card. But all he wanted to see was my driver's license. So I was getting my first ticket in this city. It didn't impress me much. Like I say, I held a goose greaser record. But this was a different kind of a ticket. Well, I had to go to court all right, but that wasn't new. But this court was held right in the school. And the judge and jury and the whole court were girls and fellas like myself. How about that? I didn't dig it at all. Officer Daniels was there. He was the police department advisor. The judge really socked it to me. Oh, I didn't have to go to jail or pay another fine. I was sentenced to a special traffic school for unsafe and reckless drivers. I'd heard about these school courts all over the country. How they'd help cut down teenage accidents. But I'd never dreamed I'd end up in one. I had to find out from somebody just what was the matter with this town. Why were they so far behind the times? I guess Officer Daniels had figured out what I was thinking. He suggested that Walt and Janet Perry explain a few things about their city and hot rotting the night's way. They gave it to me, both barrels. They were behind the times, I was. How about that? Me, behind the times. <laughs> so, I began learning about real hot rodding. The kind that developed after World War II. That's when thousands of high school and college kids and servicemen were bitten by the speed bug. They began cutting down and souping up stock cars and racing them in the public streets. It didn't take long to give drivers under 25 a bad name. Why? 
Maybe because teenage accidents were killing or maiming somebody once every two minutes, causing more damage than all fires and twice as many casualties as we had in the whole Korean War. The police cracked down, too, and collected driver's licenses wholesale. This scene was played up in a national picture magazine. But like Walt explained, figures don't mean much, just reading them. You're a lot more impressed by what happens to you personally. Tom Hanks was Walt's best friend, and his hero, actually. Tom had been in the Air Force as a fighter pilot. Now he was going to college. Tom had built up just about the slickest cut-down custom conversion in existence. You see, Tom had a big advantage. His father, George Hanks, had a big auto repair business. And besides that, he manufactured and sold speed parts. Mr. Hanks had to admit that his son had the hottest motor in town. But Tom shouldn't have spent all his time on the motor. There are other parts to a car, too. Like those little gimmicks in the wheels, the brakes. Tom was breezing down the road, and he was catching up to the 1105, a pretty fast freight. Then he thought of a good test for his engine. If he could beat the fast freight to the crossing, he'd know his engine was perfect. Then the engine sputtered, missed, slowed down just a little. Tom wouldn't beat the train. He'd have to use his brakes. But he didn't have any, and it was too late to turn off. It would have been easy to find that leak in the brake line. But Tom had spent all his time on the motor. A whole lot more impressive than figures. After the accident, Mr. Hanks told Officer Jim Daniels he wanted to do something, anything, to keep other boys from getting killed the way his son was. Well, Officer Daniels was ready. He'd been reading about a new kind of hot rod club with stiff, safe driving tests and which only admitted members who hadn't had a ticket for six months. They raced their cars, but only on special safe drag strips after complete safety inspections. So that was how the Knights Hot Rod Club was organized. Mr. Hanks was its sponsor, and Jim Daniels agreed to be police department advisor. Mr. Hanks turned over a garage to the club and gave them enough tools and equipment for a start. Every hot rodder in town wanted to join, but the safe driving test and no ticket requirement kept out quite a few at the start. While they were waiting for a drag strip, the Knights began getting their cars in shape to qualify. And to many proud owners' surprise, a lot of the cars failed the safety inspection. Those that failed were disqualified for racing, so the owners worked them over night and day until they did pass. The inspection teams were getting good, so Officer Daniels decided to play a joke on them see just how good they were. He brought over a prowl car that was ready for overhaul. The mechanic had found five things wrong. Now Jim wondered whether the Knights could find them. All the inspection teams joined in, teaming up on Jim's car. And they found the faults all right. And then more faults. And more faults. And more faults, a dozen more than the contract mechanic had located. When Jim got that report, he realized he'd been driving a death trap. He was lucky to have gotten to the garage alive. Yeah, the Knights had made a believer out of Jim. 